Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk about comparing unlike fractions. And we're going to use a method that we've been working on recently, comparing using benchmarks. And we're going to move on to a new strategy. Now, if we look at this first example, we can see that we've got two fractions, 3 tenths and 6 eighths. And I've drawn a model, or two models, on the right-hand side here, and showing the halfway point. So if I look at 3 tenths in our first model, I can draw 3 tenths over here, and this one is going to be 6 eighths. 3 tenths takes me to here, and 6 eighths takes me all the way to here. And using these models, we can quite easily see that 6 eighths is more than a half and 3 tenths is less than a half, which means that 6 eighths is a bigger fraction than 3 tenths. Now, you might notice that we're dealing with two different size holes here. Um, if we adjusted these to make them part of the same hole, it, it, wouldn't make a diff it would make a difference, but 6 eighths is still a bigger fraction than 3 tenths. All right, S three tenths of a bowl of fruit would be less than six eighths of a bowl of fruit because six eighths is more than half and three tenths is less than half. And that's the benefit of using benchmarks as a method of comparing fractions. All right, to show this mathematically, I know that five tenths is a half and I know that four eighths is a half. Both of these are equal to one half. Now, if 4 eighths is a half, then 6 eighths is bigger than 4 eighths, so 6 eighths must be bigger than a half. And if 5 tenths is a half, then 3 tenths is smaller than 5 tenths, which means that 3 tenths is less than a half. And I can use that information from those benchmarks to tell me that 3 tenths is smaller than 6 eighths. All right. Now, if we look at this example, we've got two fractions, three quarters and two thirds. Both of these fractions are bigger than a half. And I can, I can prove that using models if I want to. Um, but I'm, I'm just letting you know now that both of these are bigger than a half, which means that we can't use our benchmark of a half. All right, if we did, we'd find, okay, well, they're both bigger than a half, but that doesn't tell us which of these is bigger. Is three quarters bigger? Or is two thirds bigger? So we're going to have to find a new way to do this. And to do this, we need to change both of these fractions so that they both have the same denominator. Okay, which means that I need to divide each of these models into equally sized parts so that each of them has the same amount of parts. And to do that, we look at our denominators. I've got fourths and thirds. And what I want you to do is I want you to times four by three. Four times three is equal to 12. And this new number here, this 12, is going to tell you how many parts you could break it up into. All right, how do I change this four into 12. Well, I already know that I need to multiply it by 3 because that's what I did to get to 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, this side is going to be times by 3 over 3. And this side is going to be times by 4 over 4 because I had to times 3 by 4 to get to 12. And this is going to give me 3 over 3 times by 3 over 4. 3 times 3 is equal to 9. And 3 times 4 is equal to 12. And 2 over 3 times by 4 over 4 is going to equal 8 over 12. Now, you might be wondering why I'm multiplying by 3 over 3. Well, 
3 over 3 is the same as saying 3 divided by 3, which is equal to 1. 3 thirds is equal to 1. But we also know that any number, any number times by 1 is equal to whatever it was. So 3 times 1 is equal to 3. 5 times 1 is equal to 5. 3 quarters times by 1 is equal to 3 quarters. We are using this to find an equivalent fraction of our first number, but with a denominator that is the same in both problems. That's why we're doing this. So, if I start from just by looking at these, I've now said 3 thirds times by 3 quarters is 9 twelfths and 2 thirds times by 4 quarters is 8 twelfths. This means that 3 quarters is equal to 9 twelfths and, four, and 2 thirds is equal to 8 twelfths. Alright, all I've done here is I've found equivalent fractions and now I've got 3 quarters which was 9 twelfths and I've got 2 thirds which is 8 twelfths. Can I compare these numbers? Of course, which do you think is going to be bigger? Well, I know that 9 is bigger than 8 and I've got twelfths for both of them. So I know that 9 is bigger than 8. So 9 twelfths is going to be greater than 8 twelfths. All right. If we look at what we've done here, if we look at what we've done here, I've said, hey, I've got three quarters. I'm going to make this into twelfths. So what do I need to do to my quarters to make it into twelfths? I need to split each of these blocks into three pieces. Can you see that each of my blocks is going to be three pieces? And if I look at my first fraction, three quarters, that would have been all three of these shaded in. Are you with me? Now let's look at two thirds. Two thirds, let's show you that to begin with. I've got these two thirds. And I want to break those up into twelfths. How do I break thirds into twelfths? I need to divide each of these into four pieces. Four equally sized pieces. Now what I've got is I've got my fractions both broken up into 12 pieces and in my first example I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 out of 12 and in my second example I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 out of 12. So mathematically we started off with 3 quarters and 2 thirds I times 4 by 3, I times my two denominators together in this step in order to find out a number that both of these could be divided into. And then I said, well, what did I have to do to my quarters to turn them into twelfths? I had to break them into three times as many pieces. So three quarters times by three over three is equal to nine over twelve. What did I need to do to my thirds? To turn them into 12 equal pieces, I needed to times them by 4. So I broke them up into 4 equal pieces. And I ended up with 8 twelfths. Now that I have two equivalent fractions with now the same denominator, now they're much easier to compare. And I got left with my answer in my final step, 9 twelfths is greater than 8 twelfths. If we were to look at a new example, let's say 4 fifths, and I wanted to compare that to 3 fourths. Well, I can again see that both of these fractions are bigger than a half. So using my benchmark fractions aren't going to help me. So how am I going to split these problems up? How am I going to break this problem down so that I can solve it? Well, I need 
both of these sides, I need these quarters and I need these fifths to uh, turn into the same denominator. What denominator can I choose that I can split both these numbers up into? Well, I always start off by saying, well, four and five, four times five. Those are my different denominators times those together. That's going to give me 20. All right. So I want to change these fractions that I've got into new fractions, equivalent fractions with a denominator of 20. What do I need to do to four fifths to make it something over 20? Well, what do, what do I do to five to make it 20? I need to make it times by four over four. Four times four is 16. Four fifths is equal to 16 twentieths. All right, but I need to do the same thing for my other fraction. Three quarters is equal to what over 20? What, how do I get from 4 to 20? I need to multiply by 5. 5 over 5. 5 times 3 is 15. Now, I have an equivalent fraction for 4 fifths with a denominator of 20. And I have an equivalent fraction for 3 quarters with a denominator of 20. Now we can compare them because they're broken up into the same amount of parts. So if I start off by rewriting the, the new fractions out, I have 4 fifths is 16 twentieths, 16 twentieths. And 3 quarters is 15 twentieths. Which of these numbers is bigger? Well, they're both the same size parts. So the one with more parts is going to be bigger. 16 twentieths is greater than 15 20th. So if I look at this model now, I have 4 fifths and I have 3 quarters. Alright, they're not the same size pieces, so I can't compare their sizes. So what we need to do is I've got 4 fifths. I know that I want 20 equally sized pieces. I figured that out by multiplying my two denominators together. So how am I going to break up these 5 fifths into 20 twentieths? Well, I need to divide them each into 4 equally sized pieces. So I'm going to divide that in half and each of these halves in half. Okay, now I've got twentieths. Three quarters of those twentieths are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 twentieths equals 4 fifths. Alright, and here I've got my three quarters. And I need to find out how can I split this up into 20 equally sized pieces. Well, I need to divide each of these pieces five ways one two three four five okay so three quarters is equal to one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen twentieths Four fifths is 16 twentieths, three quarters is 15 twentieths. This is how we use a model to prove what we've done. All right. And now that we've got a model that proves our working out, I can for sure say that uh, four fifths is greater than three quarters because 16 twentieths is equal to four fifths and 15 twentieths is equal to three quarters. And I know that 16 twentieths is bigger than 15 twentieths. All right. Thank you so much for listening. Good luck with your work tonight. And if you have any questions, please post a private comment on your assignment for the day.